Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing for Thursday, the 18th of April. I'm Derek Clark, and I'm joined this morning, um, as uh, Johnny just said off here, the OGs. Uh, Johnny, how are we doing? Well, uh, yeah, there's a lot to talk about, isn't there, Derek? And there's going to be no hiding place for a few people today, I think. And if you're tuning in for a nice, jolly, happy uh, Rangers Review Morning Briefing, I don't think you're going to get it. Uh, no, absolutely. Joshua also joins me. How are you doing, Joshua? Get much sleep last night? Uh, a bit, yeah, a bit. Obviously, we were on relatively late, but uh, yeah, we, we hashed out a fair amount of talking points last night, Derek. Something tells me, as Johnny alludes to, there might be a few more this morning. Yeah, um, we were here on here last night. We hadn't um, listened to Philip Clement's interview with Sky or the press conference. We'll get stuck into that shortly before we do. A quick word for our podcast sponsors, MPH Boilers. Uh, you know the drill by now, folks. They've got some fantastic Wiesman Boilers on offer at this moment in time. They've got flexible finance options. The first year, uh, you get service free. Uh, they also uh, chuck in a free internet controller as well. It's um, All the important links are in the description below. Do go and check them out if that is something that you are thinking about. Right, uh, let's... Uh, Crack on with uh, what happened last night. Um, where do we start with this, uh, Johnny? The manager in this uh, post-match press conference uh, said, he was asked, uh, you said you were looking for a reaction tonight. How do you feel? Yes, he gave a reaction. We didn't get the result we wanted. We were the only team to deserve this result this evening in the possession and the chances also, the clear chances. But you need to put the ball against the net and you also need some luck sometimes. A few good opportunities few good saves of the goalkeeper who had a really good game. A few times the ball was saved on the line and the goal. You need to take the moment and that opens up the game. If Dundee needs to come also and to do something with the ball, but uh, what they almost didn't do except from the start of the game. Seeing the manager's press conference coming in for a bit of criticism, Johnny, I get where he's coming from. He's not going to throw the players under the bus, of course, with a monumental game coming up this Sunday, a game that I'm... Uh, really concerned about, but um, does he have a point? Did they get a reaction? I've never seen any reaction from Sunday last night. I thought it was a dreadful performance. I think behind the ball, they got a reaction. I think they were more organised, but as for the rest of the manager's comments with regards to bossing the game and Dundee's goalkeeper having a phenomenal game and all that sort of stuff that he came out with, I just think he he got that massively wrong. The Rangers supporters are looking for honesty, realism. They're hurting right now. And I think most people looked at that press conference and thought, what planet is this guy on? And we'd be starting to worry about a manager who's done so well to this point. So he's got it badly wrong. That said, he cannot throw his players under the bus. He has to defend them. And I'll tell you why. Because on Sunday, he's got a cup semi-final that he needs to win. And while everyone else, I think the, the, the pundits on this included, think the season is now over, technically it's not. Technically, if they win the five games and score more goals than Celtic, they will win the league. So that's where he's coming from by defending his players. He can't come out and fill it Goldson and take Tavernier down a peg or two and tell us what he really thinks about Lundstrom in the middle. He's, he just can't He can't do that. But that said, he could have spoken to the media in a way that was a bit more realistic in terms of, I think, how that game panned out. Because I saw a lot of Rangers fans on social media talking about it. I saw a lot of neutrals on social media talking about it. And I think everyone was saying the same thing. This was a continuation in a lot of ways, particularly in the final third, of what we saw against Ross County, and Dundee were more than deserving of their point, and I'm quite sure while Rangers probably e edged the XG, I've not seen the XG, I can't imagine there was an awful lot in it. So mm -hmm. I think the manager got that completely wrong. Uh, Joshua, we've got the uh, the stats bomb uh, race chart here that tells us about the, the XG. Well, we'll fire yeah. it up on the screen, you can explain um, if Rangers were unlucky not to emerge with all three points. Um, can you explain for people that are maybe unfamiliar with this graphic what it what it tells us? 
Yeah, all it's doing is uh, the, the indents, uh, the higher the indent, the higher the quality of chance, and it's uh, chronologically charting the chances throughout the game. The XG was 1.42 to 0.42. So on the face of things, um, it's probably a game you maybe sneak 1-0 at a point in the season. With that, there's a lot of context. The only real quality chance Rangers uh, created was when Abdallah Sima went through on goal. Um, that fast break when I think it was Todd Cantwell won the ball back, didn't he? Um, that had an expected goals of, of 0 0.3. Aside from that, only one chance had a higher um, expected goals value of 0 0.12 before people shouted at me about expected goals. Uh, all that is showing is that they didn't they didn't create many chances of of, of, of no many chances of quality. And I think the most I tweeted this out last night, Derek. Watching that game, you did not feel like it was a game where Rangers deserved to win because of the context. You're going to get games within this season where you go away to what you know. Dundee have been a, a good side this season; uh, they're in the top six. You're going to get games where you go away and you don't concede much, as Rangers did, and and, and take one of your chances and, and, and edge a one 0 We saw it a lot under Steven Gerrard the, the season that Rangers won the league. But last night wasn't that type of game. Last night you needed to see a reaction. Last night you needed to see more than what was created in the second half, which was, I think, 0 0.4 expected goals. You can see in that chart there, the majority of Rangers' chances came before the break. And it wasn't until, again, the final 10, 15 minutes where they started to get any territory around the Dundee box. So I agree with Johnny. Clement has to protect his players. I think on the balance of play, if he's looking at it in isolation, his team didn't concede much and, and created the, the better chances. The issue was... There was not much, uh, you know, quality, not many ch quality chances of note at all. And in that final 30 minutes, Rangers hardly kind of turned the screw or, or, or really were able to to dial up and, and, and pepper the, the Dundee goal. I don't think their goalkeeper had too many saves to make. Um, and yeah, kind of continuation as we'll maybe come on to speak about, Derek, of what we've seen since Rangers beat Hearts, who are in third place emphatically, and they went to Kilmarnock. Before that, they'd won... Um, 18 of 20 league games under Clement. The only blemish has been the old firm game and the Aberdeen game, which on the basis that day, they should have won based on chances created. Since they went away to Rugby Park, they've they've, they've lost two, drawn two and won five. Uh, those games included, you know, losing against Motherwell at home, dropping points away at Dundee and losing away at Dingwall. And, and that's why we're having this conversation because for all the good work Rangers have done to get themselves into this position, their form since they went to Rugby Park has, has, has been pretty horrendous in all honesty. Yeah, uh, it certainly has. Uh, there's an interesting comment coming in from James. He says, uh, how can we go from a uh, comeback in a 3-3 game to the last two performances? Uh, in all honesty, Celtic could have been out of sight uh, by half time at Ibrox. It was a, a shocking display. Um, they got a reaction in, in the second half. Um, the manager, of course, made changes, brought uh, Abdallah Sima on. Uh, and Rangers, uh, when they went 3-2 behind, did well to uh, come back and get a draw in that game. However, that the, the Previous two games, they have just fallen off a cliff. It looks like um, from the outside that the team, that there's some disharmony in that dressing room. The players aren't playing for each other, Johnny. They're not They're not running through brick walls for the manager as they were earlier on uh, in the season. There's something not right behind the scenes there. It's clear as day. And uh, yeah, I think last night just proved that a team that are supposedly going for the championship did not look like that whatsoever. It looked like a team that were just uh, running down the games of the season. Well, I don't know about all that, Derek. I know these rumours uh, going wild about um, dressing room arguments and all the rest of it, but that is what happens in Glasgow. It's it's uh, every time there's any kind of bad run between either side of the old form, it's the same stuff that comes out. What I would say is how many days ago was the Celtic match? Was that a week? Nine Nine days, nine ten. So nine, nine days nine, ago, ten. they were pulling themselves back from two 0 down to two two, and they were pulling themselves back with what three minutes to go against Celtic. So it's uh, I, I, I'm not sure about that. To me, what this is about is it's about confidence, mentality, all these things that are intangible. You've got a team there that look utterly bereft of invention of confidence i saw multiple examples last night where for me i saw players who were looking to take the easy option who were looking to find the easy ball who weren't taking the onus upon themselves to do something creative i wouldn't go as far as to say hiding but i would say weren't necessarily taking it on their shoulders and when you have that you have problems especially when you're going up against a team as clement said as well organized as going for man for man and is inviting you into a fight. You know, you have to have the fight to match that. And I didn't think there was an awful a lot an awful lot of 
intensity to Rangers even last night, although they were doing the basics once again to some extent. Ultimately, what we're talking about here, Derek, is once this season's up, there's going to be another restructure of this team. And it's going to have a lot of work for Niels Koppen and a lot of work for Clement to do to get this right because they, they won't have £30 million to go out and spend and restructure. They're going to have to be very clever in who they move on to bring money in. And there is going to have to be serious changes. For me... The collapse that we've seen over the last two days, the last two games, point to mentality. And I don't mean that in the sort of traditional sense. I mean allowing your confidence to be knocked by one game. Clement's talked about in the past about these players being able to bounce back from from defeat, to bounce back in adversity, um, from adversity. But, but, but they, they haven't done that last night. And I think that's the most worrying thing. And they look, they looked like they were playing well within themselves, especially creatively. I just want to say one last thing, Derek. One last thing. We sat on a podcast in January. We looked at the signings: Silva, Cortez, Diamande, all kind of younger lads, all guys with potential, all guys that you'd probably say make sense in a longer term plan. Um, if with the exception of Silva, who was clearly going to be an impact player. I don't think that's that was ever going to be looked at as someone who was going to come in and be be a long-term signing, given the amount he went for to Wolves. But we did say at the time that Rangers have missed a trick by not signing a striker. We said that Philip Clement might look back and regret not going out and making sure he had someone reliable to score goals. And while there's many, many problems in this Rangers team at the moment, the biggest one is that they don't have a reliable striker. That money that's been spent on Silva, Silva's had a very, very up and down time and has been very poor over the last few, few days. I think there's, a, there's talent there, but he's a young lad and it needs harnessed. But he's not the number nine to lead Rangers to a title. No. And that is, for me, the biggest mistake that's been made at the club. I think with Philip Clement in charge, if they'd gone and pushed the boat out, and I hate to say it again, but Miofsky or Shankland are right there. They're not cheap. But Diamandi wasn't cheap, and he's not going to be cheap. And I think one of those two players would have given Rangers a fighting chance at this title. And based on what we've seen, I think Rangers would be in a really strong position if they'd taken one of those players in January. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, and I now realise I'm getting into the rant territory, so I'm going to try and wrap up quickly. Serial Dessers is not and will never be a Rangers standard striker. He's a lovely big guy, he's a hard worker, his numbers are decent, but he's not a focal point. He wasn't the worst player last night, he's not been the worst player over the last few games, and I know people saying about, I know there's people who defend him and get annoyed when I dig him out, but if your number nine is not good enough, you're never going to win a title. Yeah. Teams without a good number nine don't win titles, and ultimately... For me, that's Rangers' biggest problem. And until they address that issue, and it's been an issue for a long time now, Rangers have been looking for a Morelos replacement for a long time because the Alfredo Morelos of the last two years was not the Alfredo Morelos that we knew before that. They've never been able to replace that barnstorming Tasmanian devil that was Alfredo Morelos 2018, 2019, 2019, 2020. He never scored that many goals, though. I mean, I know what you mean. Uh, in Europe, I think that they miss him, um, but like in that season there. But, um, but just, even in the big games in the in the Scottish uh, Premiership, he would stand up and he would he would he would perform. I don't think these is Alfredo Morelos could score goals against Aberdeen, for example. I remember him scoring goals at Petodre. I I don't think Dessers is someone you can hang your hat on in these type of games. No. Nah. No, and, 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 and that is what is needed. Lauren Shankland is there, and, and to me, it's absolutely obvious that Rangers need to go and get him. I know there'll be people that disagree, people that say, you go out to the, the continent and you'll get better for the money. But, you know, people say Silva was a £35 million player when he was picked up by Wolves. I think we can look at him and go, fine potential. for whatever reason, he, he doesn't look like a player that's particularly suited to the rigours and the physicality of the Scottish League. Now, 
he might that may well click from down the line because he's got a lot of talent. But Rangers need a mix of talent for the future and talent that is there now, and that is there now in the Scottish League because that's what they need to win. Yeah. So for me, they need to go out and get players like that in the summer. Yeah. yeah. Whether they do or not uh, is up to them, and ultimately, I think that'll be uh, a measure of how successful they're going to be in the long term. Yeah, just on Fabio Silva, English clubs can spend huge, obscene amounts of money on players um, just based on potential. Whether they work or not, it doesn't really matter because they get such an influx of cash down there that um, they will make a loss on them, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, let's get to it. an interesting point on uh, Kamaru started last night, Joshua. Uh, Blue-eyed boy, but an interesting point. Why were we playing high balls to Roof? This is a criticism I've seen levelled at Philip Clement's side in uh, recent games. They're a long ball team, missing out the midfield, just going, lumping the ball up, being really direct. Um, <coughs> why were we doing that last night? Well, well, it's not new, exacerbated by Diomandi not being there. We spoke, we've spoken a little bit in recent weeks about why he's picking up those positions in front of the defence. And um, I think the, the absence of Nico Raskin last night it really shows he is not in Clement's immediate plans because when you're playing Lawrence and I think away from home, especially out of position, that Ibrox is maybe a bit of a different story if Rangers have a lot of territory. But I thought it was another game last night where the legs in midfield just um, weren't sufficient for how open that game became at points. But when you need someone to play the ball through midfield, we know that's not Lundstrom's game. We kind of touched on that last night, Derek, didn't we? That the absence of a kind of creative player in that Rangers midfield for a long, long time. That's a bigger problem than, uh, than Clement being here. Why are they playing so many long balls? Uh, I think it's twofold. There's quite a lot of coverage on the website about this. They want to attack quickly and they want to try and miss the midfield out of points. They want to try and turn the defence. I think what you saw last night was, and this is maybe why Silva started, because Dundee were man mark and they were trying to drag one of the centre-backs out of the defence, whether that be by roof dropping or, or silver dropping, and then getting the likes of, of, of Sima. You know, running in behind, which didn't obviously materialise that often. We spoke about it quite frequently. I think we spoke about it actually when Rangers were playing well. The phrase I think we used quite often was they need to balance the, the kind of the control with the chaos because last night they don't really lose the ball in bad areas because they're not playing the ball through midfield. But when you are going direct into the front line, when that doesn't come off, obviously the ball turns over continually and then you're not able to build pressure in the opposition's final third. The two things that have helped that is at points um, when Todd Campbell came back into the team, I think he, thinking of St Johnston away, he's one player who can you know take the ball through midfield. It was really quiet last night. But he can take the ball in difficult situations with his back to goal. Diamandi can do that as well. He can take the ball in difficult areas and, and, and play through. But I think it's a byproduct of how Clement wants to play, which is, is fast, turning the defence, playing vertically when he can. The options he had available, which was a, a lack of pace outside of, of Sima in the top line last night. And what we've seen so far, quite often away from home, which is that Rangers will be direct, but they won't give up many chances. It was If you think of a game like St Johnston away, it wasn't even when Diamandi was playing, it wasn't that much different. And that was you know, not that long ago. It doesn't look good when you don't get the results. And obviously that happened to Rangers last night. For, for me, Derek, they look like a team who had worked, they worked so hard, bigger picture-wise, to get themselves back into this position. And very, very quickly, it's evaporated again in front of their eyes. And just one comment that stood out to me from um, CGM55, the Red Van injury, um, it's, it's had a huge effect because he can't play Sterling in different areas. Said it last night. I think he's been Rangers' best player in 2024. You look at that Rangers team last night and there's not many players who can outplay someone 1v1, you know, who, who are going to win their duels, who are going to be able to run by someone or, or play in field or just do a variety of different things, which Ridvan can do. Um, that's why I was surprised they didn't start one more kind of ball carrier on the pitcher in the final third because Lawrence or Dowell, they're not players who are really going to dominate large zones of space. If you could have played Dujon Sterling higher at the pitch, that would have maybe helped. I think Ridvan's injuries had a, a real big impact over the past few games. Yeah, uh, interesting point here, saying that the team cannot win the battle in the midfield at the moment. Midfield is absolutely non-existent just now, Johnny. Uh, the managers get big decisions to make uh, on Sunday. John Lundstrom should be in that first team. Uh, Tom Lawrence, another shocker last night. Who does he bring in? Joshua just said Nico Raskin is uh, not in the picture. It looks like there's something going on there. Uh, Dujon Sterling, for me, uh, I wouldn't be playing him at left back. He Rangers need legs in that middle of the park. I'd be playing him. In the centre, it remains to be seen if Mohamed Diamandi will be fit enough uh, to feature against Hearts. Uh, touch wood, he will be. 
Um, but other than that, it's a, a big, a big uh, dilemma for the manager to to work out because at this point in time, um, that's as Joshua said, they are going long, they are missing out the midfield. Rangers being overrun in there at this moment in time. Hearts will fancy their chances of bossing it on Sunday. <coughs> yeah, I think they will. They absolutely will. I mean, anyone who covers Rangers and we cover them pretty closely. Is, is anyone confident that, that Rangers are going to go out and take on Hearts? Hearts are a lot better than either of these two teams that, that, that there's been a struggle with. And up front, Hearts have a striker that will score three chances out of five. So it's a really, really worrying one. You want to see Rangers get back to a, a much more even keel from their point of view. And, and you look at the, the last two games and I think uh, Stephen Naismith will be sensing blood in the water. And it's it's all about how Rangers respond now. Now, you look at that midfield. Personally, I'm not a fan of Barisic. He's out of contract at the end of the season. I always think with players going out of contract, they are distracted. They don't want to get injured. There's not that level of commitment that you would get. Listen, I've seen it with Rangers legends. You know, you, you, you saw it with um, Loudrop back in the day wasn't the same in his final season. Absolutely not. We've seen it more recently with Morelos and Kent, not the same. Um, so I, I, as much as I'm not a fan of Barisic, I honestly, if I was the Rangers manager, I'm getting Sterling into that midfield because I feel like Rangers need to go back to the basics of winning a battle in there. There's too many second balls flying about and getting um, getting won by the opposition. There's, there's just not enough structure. There's not enough sense of solidity, and, and I would go back to a more traditional 4-2-1-3 uh, or 4-2-3-1 four, two, four, two, formation and try and give it a little bit more dig in there because mm. this is Scottish football. These teams that are coming up against Rangers, they're all going to give 110%. It's their opportunity to shine. They're on the telly. It's the most <laughs> media uh, um, glare that they're ever going to get so, and this has been going on time immemorial. That's why they they give so much, and it's and it's just obvious. So mm. Rangers need to be up for that and up for winning that physical battle. And it sounds anachronistic, but it's just been a truism for the entire time I've watched Scottish football. I mean, I wish everyone tried to play out from the back, and we tried to develop a a, a, a more attractive national style, but that's just not the case. And Managers will always try and use the physicality in Scottish football. You need to be able to to show the, the fight and show the battle. And the, I think Clement's options are limited, but Sterling is one. It might mean having to play Barisic at left back. Can play Ben um, Davis, yeah. Ben he Davis is also could night. come in, but I mean that's he's been out in the cold for so long, Derek. I mean it's, it's it, and he didn't, Johnny he didn't play him. He didn't play him there when he had no left backs back in October. He changed. He changed the shape away at Sparta Prague. So yeah, I think that's there's, no, there's no good options out there apart from Robbie Sterling. Fraser. Bring Robbie Fraser, John Lee Yefeko. I, I don't care. They need to they need to bring someone in. It's not that. That is not a. You do care because you do care well, because if, if the, no, the midfield game, the midfield area get, is more of a concern that left than left back. If Hearts play, um, you know. I, one of their one of their players out there on target that space and Rangers lose three goals from the left back slot, then everyone will say to Clement, why, why did you bring in a young player? It's it's not as easy as that. Um, you have to pick the best option available, and it's it's easy to be scorched earth. Um, and I understand what you're saying, but bring in the youngsters and then they beat, get beat six 0 You know, there's still a lot to play for. This well, season. The, the option is keep with it the, the same players that are failing at this moment in time. Um, I'm going to mention a couple. There's, there's some that are coming in for some uh, serious criticism. Uh, Richie with the point here says, keep it apart, the spine of our team is woeful. They've got Jack Butland, who is uh, the base of the spine, but uh, they don't have anyone else, Johnny. Well, that's the biggest problem when you're up against a title race. When you're in a title fight and the opposition, their spine is Joe Hart. Okay, Butland's better than Joe Hart, so that's a good start for Rangers. Yep. Who would you take, Carter Vickers or Goldson? I think most people would take Carter Vickers. Yeah. Would you take Lundstrom or McGregor? I think we know the answer to that. Would you take Kyogo or Dessers? I go. mean, that's that's yeah. your problem. That, that that one point made by Richie there that highlights the problem that the manager has, and it's almost a a fake sense of of 
excitement that's that's come over everyone over the last three or four months because of the amazing work that he's done. But see, when you look at the spines of Celtic and the spine of Rangers, shouldn't even be a title race. And I think now you're seeing the team go back and revert to a level of form that is probably more in keeping with the standard. Yeah. It was always yeah. going to drop, and it's dropped at the worst possible time. But the spine, it's, it's a great point. That spine, Butland, Goldson, Lundstrom, Dessers, I think Ponderous. there's a lot of room for improvement there. I mean, yeah. Josh, what, what would you make on that? Yeah, I, agree. I mean, I think the most perplexing thing for me, I know Clement spoke about Nico Raskin recently, and I know that uh, Raskin has not uh, had a good season. But th this time last year, I remember Derek, uh, the League Cup, was it League Cup final or League Cup semi? It was League Cup final where he came on, and it was around that time where it just felt like he was an immediate upgrade in that yep. Rangers midfield. And he has not become whether it. The thing that's confused me about Raskin is okay, maybe you could say there's stylistic <laughs> differences to to how Clement wants to play. But when you look at Lawrence playing in that deep line role uh, last night, when you look at Dowell doing that um, at Bros County the weekend, I don't think that argument re really covers it. So if it was me um, and I was picking the team for Sunday, I would definitely bring uh, Nico Raskin back into the middle of the pitch uh, because why <laughs> we're at the stage of why not. Um, but also he's not he's not started a game since, what, early February. The reason I think Sterling's important at left back, I, I agree that you want him. You could feasibly play him in a number of different positions. I just think that Rangers, there was one moment in the second half last night where Rangers almost conceded a really dangerous counter-attack. I, I think maybe around, maybe it was the first half, I can't remember. I want to say it was in the second half. And Sterling put in that huge tackle that stopped it. And, and that, for me, was indicative of why he had to go back to left back. Although Rangers didn't go and score a goal last night, they did look better defensively. And a, a big part of that was, I think, having him there. Um, but it's an indictment of, of where that spine is that you, you could play Dujon Sterling in a number of different positions. If Diomandi was back, I'd be inclined to go Diomandi and Raskin um, in the middle of the pitch. I, I do think you need to make changes. I think you need wingers just for balance. I was surprised that that didn't happen uh, last night um, with, with, with Ross McCausland and, and Rabi Matondo. But you, you need to you need to make changes because the, I think because there wasn't that reaction last night, so it's justifiable. Um, but I would like to see Nico Raskin come back into the middle of the pitch purely because we, we've seen him be a good player for Rangers not that long ago. He's still young. What suggests that he's going to be worse than what we've seen in the in the last couple of games? I, I, I don't think much. Mm. Uh, the manager was asked last night um, if he still believes Rangers can uh, win the title. This is what he had to say. I still believe that. I, be I, I was maybe the only one in Glasgow who believed that in October. Probably the only one of all town who believed that. So we are now six months later. And if we win all our games, then there's a really big possibility for that. So. I think that's already a big step forward and I believe I've seen what they've done this season already so they can do it again. So the manager's not losing uh, belief that Rangers can claw back uh, that three-point deficit and not to mention that the goal difference. Uh, Celtic is at five or six goals ahead at this moment five. in time. Um, you're going to have to win all five games. You're going to have to beat Celtic at Parkhead. For me, Johnny, the league's done. Uh, I think uh, the game at Dingwall um, was a huge blow. Last night just sort of cemented uh, my feelings on it. Uh, I wouldn't back <laughs> when one of the remaining games, we know we go to uh, St Mirren on the 28th of April. That'll be a hard game. They'll all be hard games. But um, yeah, uh, unless Celtic have a monumental collapse, the league's done for me. Yeah, I mean, it's not done, but it is done. Yeah. I mean, it's not technically done, but I think we all know that based on what we've seen, it's, it's almost unimaginable that this could be turned around at this stage. Mm. Now, he might point to the fact that we all said that um, when he arrived. And he's he's right, it's true, and good on him. If he can turn it around, he'll be a hero. But do you know what? It's now time for action, not words. So Philip Clement has to get his players onto the training ground. He has to get them re-drilled, get them to Hamden, win that and maybe there'll be a little bit more belief than there is right now. But yeah. it's not about words at the moment. It's about actions. I, listen, I'm, I'm wary of putting the book too much into Philip Clement about the presser. He's He's got to say, and I'll repeat yeah. this again, he's got to say what 
he knows will get the best out of his players. He's he's there as a manager. He's not a fan who is just want to go in and stick the yeah. boot into everyone. So as a professional, he's got to weigh his comments to have the maximum impact on his boys. And he clearly feels that they need support at the moment. Now, we can all discuss about whether that's appropriate. We we remember like the, the guys who were nine in a row at Rangers didn't need a lot of that kind of support, did they? But sometimes they will have. And they all talk about what Walter Smith was able to do in terms of putting an arm around them and things like that. So you just got to hope from a Rangers point of view that Philip Clement is adopting the right policy and it's going to be enough to get through this, this semi against Hearts. You've got to imagine it's going to be Celtic waiting in the final. So given that, that that's there and there's another old firm game to go, he's not got a lot of time and he's got to get it back to a, a place where this team is looking like it's functioning again. It feels like a long way away, Derek. There's no doubt about it. You know I try and be absolutely balanced on this show. People are always telling me... Oh, you, when things are going wrong, don't be a happy clapper, etc. I'm not trying to be a happy clapper. I'm just trying to be balanced about it. Um, but I think watching with your own eyes what we saw last night and watching with my own eyes what I saw on the weekend, it, it seems like a, a huge jump to expect Rangers to go back to the kind of form they were in two months ago. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't know how that happens. I don't know the structure for that happening. And we're all talking about, well, what about if Raskin came in? You know, what about if X came in or Y came in? I think we all know that the problems are deeper than that and they're in every department with the exception of goalkeeper. So it's 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 a difficult one, and that that's why I think there's so much pessimism flying around. Yeah. Uh, we touched on Raskin there, Joshua, ahead of Sunday. We'll, we'll discuss uh, what the team might look like more in detail tomorrow. Can you see many other changes? Of course, uh, Leon Balligan wasn't part of the squad last night because he had a, a bout of sickness. But it remains to be seen that if Fred Van and Diamandi will make it. If Balligan is fit, incidentally, to have him in the back line uh, in place of Connor Goldson, he needs removed from that first team. Uh, John Lundstrom had removed uh, up front. He's got a, a decision on his hands. I think, did you have, um, I think you and Chris had uh, Abdallah Sima through the middle, or you had Fabio Silva uh, mm-hmm. through the middle, didn't you? And you predicted lineup. Uh, he going for uh, Abdallah Sima. I think uh, I would be inclined to start Abdallah Sima through the middle on Sunday. Can you foresee many changes, do you think, for the Hearts game? Um, probably has to be a few, doesn't there? I'd, I'd bring Raskin back and obviously if Red Van's back, then he has to play. But how realistic is that when he's still in individual training? Uh, as of Tuesday, I don't know if Dio Mandy's back. I know people are saying it was only a sore thumb, but he had he did have surgery. It's not as if he's, he's just stubbed it. Um, yeah. Hence why he's not come back into the team right away. In an ideal world, there you, you probably have Dio Mandy and and and, uh, and Raskin in there, but Raskin's not starting. If Raskin's not starting last night, is he going to start on Sunday? Um, if Sterling can play in midfield, then he, he definitely plays there. I'd bring McCausland back in. I think he gives Rangers good balance. Um, probably Seema through the middle at this stage, yes. But Clement has tended to go with one of Silva and Dessers. I, I, I don't know. I, I think, t- to Johnny's point, Clement has to stick with this group of players um, until the end of the season. You, you'll, you'll find out what he really thinks about certain people in the summer when he has to make ruthless decisions. I don't think anyone is in any doubt that he will do that because he'll know that he has to. He'll look at the last few years and you'll see common denominators and he'll know that at all times teams need refreshment and clearly Rangers uh, still do need that. So expect a few changes, but he still has to get the most out of them for this next run of of five, six games. He spoke in the week about picking Rangers, uh, you know, players up off the floor when he arrived. They then went on that run of of what uh, I mentioned at the start, 20 games in the league and, and they lost one and drew one and won 18. Even if they win five league games from now, they've got to got to turn over that goal difference. But they, they, the the point about last night was you needed to see some form of reaction, and you didn't see that. Whether mm-hmm. certain players coming back in will change that, I think we're going to find out uh, very quickly on Sunday. Yeah, we absolutely will. Uh, right, folks, uh, before we wrap up there, just to make you aware, we do have, well, firstly, a heads up uh, for those of you that are members on the YouTube channel. Uh, we will have a Q&A this afternoon at 2pm and we'll be joined by Ali, uh, who will have a lot to say on last night's uh, performance. So we hope you can join us for that. Um, get your questions and we'll get through as many as we possibly can. And a quick word as well uh, for our new offer on the website we've got just now. <clears throat> we've got two deals. You can uh, take out a year's subscription for just £18, or you can take out 
uh, a six month subscription for just a pound. Absolutely unbelievable value. Not only that, you get entered into a draw for a signed Rangers jersey. Uh, it's the, the, uh, the jersey from the 94 to the 96 campaigns. It's signed by none other than Ali McCoyst and Paul Gascoigne, and it will be framed as well. So absolutely cracking piece. All you have to do is head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe to sign up and get entered into that draw. Existing subscribers are also entered into the draw as well for that signed jersey. Right, that'll do us there. Huge thanks to uh, Johnny and to Joshua. Not the most positive of shows, um, but uh, an important one nonetheless. Uh, if we don't speak to you a little later on, folks, enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Bye for now.